The Doctor Who, our Hambra podcast. Real Doctor Who fans with real Doctor Who opinions. Welcome, one and all, to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast, episode number 276. Slowly, slowly stomping our way towards episode 300, like the Cybermen from Earthshock. My name is <laughs> Legion, otherwise known as the Token Fat Man. And joining me on the Doctor Who Alhambra sofa this week, we have the comic novice. Humphrey the Mighty uh, Warlord and Overlord Betamax. <laughs> I was going to say, I, 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 aren't I like the the token American? I come on, ah, I no, because you mini discs. mini discs. Well, you know, I'm going older than that. Betamax, <laughs> know, you're definitely saying. a Betamax kind of kid. I'm not. Oh. Actually, I've actually never seen a Betamax myself. But anyway, carry on. I saw one. So, I didn't know I, what it was at the time, and I'm like, "What the heck? Is, wh where's the other side?" To <laughs> yeah, they were actually better than VHSs, apparently. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what yeah, I've heard. They yeah, they they could hold more. Yeah, Even well, I've just opened smaller, up a, a whole fun. new conversation topic, haven't I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess with uh, this episode 276, we ha do have some news to catch up on as well as the February 2023 reviews from Big Finish. But I, I think the most important thing that we could get out of the way is Legion, Liam's excitement for the master reveal that he messaged us immediately over. So, Liam, uh, Henry Cavill is the master. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I wish. I, wish. <laughs> I did preface that with only if that was true. I, Bloody April I Fools. I love the fact. I love the fact you said that and when it, oh shit, it's April Fools. No, I knew it was <laughs> April Fools. I was just like, uh. real. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of in the camp of I. I'm believing that you believed it because why nope. on else would you immediately, uh send us both articles only to be like oh i got had again by april fools i swear you get had every april no. fools that's why i did say if only that was true no uh, you said bloody no. april fools yeah you exactly. did exactly as in like I, hang on yeah, no just, you you just, you just barely said you just barely said oh if only it was true. No, you said bloody April Fools. That to me that reads as, and I can be. I will admit to being wrong because I don't live in your mind. But um, I do. I, I I would like to <laughs> you know build real estate there though. However, I no, you wouldn't. It reads as you fell for it immediately, and then we're no. like, oops. Uh, no, okay, you are wrong. I, I knew I knew it wasn't true, but I was just like. Okay. The, they're just baiting, you know, with decent ideas. Oh, and yeah. It's never going to happen. <laughs> you shared the Disney one as well. You shared the Disney uh -huh. one as well. Yeah. I know. Henry Cavill. I think, he, I think you got a had. I, 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 nope. Again, don't live in your mind. I, I honestly fools. believe you got a had, and now you're, you're backtracking. I, I, no. Uh, but no. you know what? I shared again, them. Don't... No, I shared them just for talking points, but I knew that they, were, that they weren't true. I'm just like, <laughs> actually, though, Henry Cavill as the master is actually a really good idea. Oh, but it's a good idea. It's probably never going to happen. Three exclamation marks tell us otherwise. Mm, whatever. <laughs> so, so what, what you wasn't believe. an April Fool? Oh, I do. I do. Good. good. What wasn't uh, an April Fool, I don't know if anybody has seen it or not, they have put the first trailer up for Doctor Who. Once and future, they have. Hmm. No, I have not uh, checked that out. It's it quite interesting. Actually, sounds quite interesting. Mm. Yeah, it does. We could play it if you want. Oh, okay. I could find it. I... <laughs> <laughs> Brett, read our minds. God damn it. I, I, I would have uh, appreciated the, yeah, we could listen to it right here and I could uh, do that. But uh, I'm just, oh. all right, yeah, we can just <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> Where is it located? Be I would have loved this to be sent before uh, the show. News, well, 
Uh, under I got Survivor's New Dawn three trailer we could listen to. Oh yay! Let's see. However, I will tell you, I'm not excited for that. I'm not really All into right. that series, to be honest. Here is... So I'm not into Survivors as a whole, to be fair. From Maybe Big Finish Productions. Ah, no! It's wrong! It's all gone wrong! Ah! Doctor Who, once and future, past lives. I think it's the Doctor, sir. Oh, ah, ah, help me! We have to stop it! I must fight it. I must resist! Right, first things first. What's the current situation, Doctor? Short term memory scramble. <laughs> Tardis bruised and reproachful. Regeneration cycle all over the place. I say, Sarah Jane Smith! You look lost! Oh, it's you! Hello there! Doctor? Kate Lethbridge, Stuart. How wonderful. Hello. Dr. Petronella Osgood, at your service. You might say I'm revisiting a past life. Doctor, how far back do you go? I'm suffering from the effects of some sort of degeneration weapon. Finally, our time has come. We've drawn attention to ourselves. Oh. On the cannons, shoot that thing out of the sky. It's coming right for us, isn't it? Yes, at quite considerable speed. Mm, perhaps we should. It's too late. Big finish. For that actually time. sounds pretty good. See, I wish they'd used Tom Baker just as their intro thing because it would sell so many more CDs. Mm. Uh, I mean, they, they kind of guess you could say did do that for the 8th of March type thing. They made sure that he was on the cover and included in the story. So, I mean, you, that is a sound uh, thing to... Judgment. Mm. Um, Yeah. So, fun thing about that entire... I, I don't know what happened with my settings. I heard none of that. So... Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I, I was watching it uh, being relayed to you. I can't hear anything that plays on my end. So, uh, you guys could talk about that trailer because I, I have nothing to add. <laughs> well, I especially like the bit with the giant T-Rex. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Just there wasn't a giant T Rex. Sure, I, I, I was pretty. I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that that there was no giant T Rex. But uh, sure, yeah, I, I'm excited for I that. I swear part two. on the big finish listeners page when you listen when you click on the video link thing that they post and it jumps to the next video. I swear you there's a clip where you see River Song and Benny and the Doctors appear in that as well. Or am I thinking of another release that? Is from Legacy of Time, uh, from okay. back in two thousand and nineteen. I hate the way that they just shorts. You know, you click on the video and then it just plays on to the next one, and it's ugh, annoying. My video is just full of old Paul O'Grady videos. God knows why. Weird. I didn't think you liked Paul O'Grady. I always like Paul O'Grady. Have you listened to the Avengers thing yet with him in? Not yet, no. Which he loves, apparently. He's like a massive Avengers well, aficionado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, so. I haven't. Um, but no, that trailer's good. It, it fills huh. me with hope because mm. it's almost like the monthly range is coming back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you because I, as I listened to two of the releases for the month of February, I was just thinking back to like how I felt as though so many things were, it can't miss. I can't wait to, you know, listen to the first episode of the fourth doctor. I can't wait to listen to the companion crowds. Can't wait to listen to the main range for the month or whatever. And then, Ooh, Hey, we got a dark eyes box set. Now it is like, you know, and part of it is me. Yeah. I will I will own some of the things where it's just like, hey, Ninth Doctor Adventures, I've noped out of those. You know, we have this, you know, for February, we have the first Doctor Adventures. We have the uh, 
tw- 11th Doctor, Doctor Chronicles, and then we have the third Doctor. And then, of course, we have, uh, I'm expecting Liam to have massive, uh, renewed enthusiasm for this because he did buy this, the Exilus collection. So, I mean, basically, those are the things that we had come out for the month of February. And to me, even though there's a couple box sets in there, can I say underwhelming compared to where the releases that were coming out for me personally in, you know, 10 years ago, 2013. Oh, completely agree. Mm. You know, I don't know. I don't know how well the, I don't know how well the box set format is working, honestly. I think it's, it's a crock of shit. Yeah. It's crap because loads of people have said, oh yeah, you're releasing these stories. You know, I'm interested in one of them, not both of them. Why can't we pick and choose? Mm. Uh, and I mean, stupid two parters. I mean, Brett, yes. go and look at the go and look at the info for the fourth Doctor series twelve B box set, and you'll see what I mean. There's just no consistency to the to the box sets whatsoever. Let's see. What do you I say? No, you mean by the episode doctor, links, don't you? The twelfth Doctor Part B is that you said? Sorry, the uh, fourth, fourth doctor, doctor series twelve Part B box set. Okay, let's see. It's ridiculous. Mm. Where what what month is the for that coming out? This month. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, is it this month? Is it this so month? May? I think it's June. June. Might be. June. Or is it June? Oh. Might be June. Because I have the fifth Doctor coming out this month. That's yeah, that's Ronnie that's takes that's on the world. So I I think June must be May or June. The next. So I have. The Fourth Doctor Adventures Series Twelve Angels and Demons. That's the one. Okay. That's the one. So, so let's see. We have The Wizards of Time by Roy Gill, two parts. Friendly Invasion by Chris Chapman, two parts. Cold St- Stone Cold, Roland Moore, four parts, and The Ghost of Margaret, two parts. Er, is yeah. that what you wanted me to look at, or do yeah. you want me yeah. to look at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's just two parters don't work you know they don't work for the third doctor box set that we had they don't work no three parters don't work yes classic doctor who three parters let's be honest in the first 26 years of doctor who we had okay we had a couple in seasons 24 5 and 6 i put my hands up to that but that was because we were only getting 13 episodes a year we had one from 1963 up until 1987. Nope. Mm. Planet of Giants. Yeah. Oh, was it Planet of Giants? Which was supposed to be a four-part one, but they realized that they were, like, you know, scraping the barrel. And uh, on the Blu-ray, or not the Blu-ray, the DVD of the Planet of Giants, they did actually create, they found a... Uh, a voice actor that could do a really good job of William Hartnell, and they actually created what the fourth episode would have been had they actually yes, they gone did. through with it and not just kind of scrapped it and put it as three parts. Oh, and the answer is rubbish. Yeah, mm. uh, but no, you know, classic Doctor Who is you. <sighs> Four parts, the reason they hit on four parts is because it hit the sweet spot. You could have a good half an hour opening, you could have a good half an hour ending, you could have two parts of running up and down corridors. That is how Doctor Who works. Mm. Yeah, well, well, and yeah, and again, I I love the Third Doctor era, but when somebody peeled back the layers of like the whole six part thing where you have the two, you know, either the first two episodes are opening in one setting and then the rest of the four are somewhere else or it's inverse it's the first four episodes are in one setting and the last two are somewhere mm. else kind of like the time monster or whatever like once that kind of that that le- level got peeled off to me it's one of those things where even though i enjoy it it's just like ah uh, couldn't this have been four parts like couldn't we have just kind of like whittled some of this stuff down to uh, and and it just, just was like, before you jump in, Humphrey, I, when we get to the reviews for The Third Doctor, I feel as though episodes at least one and three of The Third Doctor 
could actually legitimately have been pulled out and extended and made interesting mm-hmm. by four parts rather than just the two parts. Mm-hmm. Episode oh, two was so dull, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. It was a two-parter, but it felt like an eight-parter. I did. <laughs> mm. The only good thing about it was oh. Paul Copley. Yeah. Let's see. You were going to say something, Humphrey. What were you going to say? A well done six parter, though, really does work. And where six part stories do have the advantage is they allow you to tell a big sweeping story. I think the sweet spot for me with six parters was um, Tom Baker's era because they had a, a thing for a while where they would have, you know, however many four-parters in a season, and then the last story of that season would be a big story, and it would be a six-parter. Mm-hmm. And that really worked for me. I really liked that. It was nice, and it, mm. it felt like a finale. It was, gen- you know, you take something like the Armageddon Factor or something, that was a big, big story, and it worked. It Talons. worked so well. Or, or Bar Underworld, Talons right? or Genesis. <laughs> Well, I mean, let's be honest, the, the Tom Baker season finales, we had Revenge of the Sidemen, which, yeah, it's a bit sucky, but that was his mm-hmm. first season. And then second season, which is series 13, 13. we had the opening, which was the Terror oh, of the Zygons. Mm-hmm. And then the Android Invasion, I want to say, was the final story. No, it was... Um, no, it wasn't. I'm wrong. Seat of Doom. Yeah. Which is a six-parter. Yeah. Six-parter. Then series... I can't count today. Series 14 opened with Mans of Mandragora. Mask of Mandragora. Season 13 was Seeds of Doom. Season 14 yeah. was... Opening was... Talons. Mask of Mandra- uh, Mandragora. And the Mandragora. ending was... Talons. Talons, yeah. Season 14 was... 15. Oh, no, sorry. See, sorry, season 15 was Horror of Fang Rock, and the closing I hate that one. was The Invasion of Time. So I hate that um, one. Yeah, that uh, that one was pretty bad. And then 16 was the, the, the reboss, reboss operation, and the ending was Armageddon Factor. And then, of course, season 17 was... Destiny, Destiny and ending and with Sharda. 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 That's so interesting. The, I never noticed the, that. The three versions. It, uh, f- four. four. <laughs> uh, so t- only t- three. Uh, yeah, only th- well, uh, yeah. I, for fourth I, doctor, I, anyway. I, I've never noticed that before, Humphrey. You had, yeah, the it starts with a four parter and ends with a six part. Very interesting. Very interesting. Huh. I never picked up on that. Do you know what? I didn't know that. It, it, my ideal, say, third and fourth Doctors, even second Doctor, whatever, box sets would be from Big Finish, would be for them to have a four-parter and a six-parter. That would be amazing. I mean, let's be honest. They could have done that with the fourth Doctor box set that is coming out, part B. They, they could yes. have done sub three bloody piddly two-parter stories. Sto- what? Stories. They could have had one four-parter and one six-parter. Mm-hmm. You know exactly, and, but I do not like box sets. I do not think they're working. If they're working for Big Finish, fair enough, whatever. But I don't personally think they're working. I think I am running very, very fast, headfirst into more Big Finish fatigue, and I have had more Big Finish fatigue since 2019 than I have in 20 years of listening to Big Finish. Mm. Mm. No, mm. I, I I think you bring I up a good mean. point because uh, today I was listening to the first because I'd never listened to Circular Time. I listened to the first story about an hour before we uh, started podcasting. Good story. And I, I mean, it, it, the funny thing about it is, is if you if you haven't re-listened to it recently, the recording studio that they recorded the the episode in is atrocious. Like. Yeah, oh my word! Like, 
<laughs> either there's it, but something it's still off the moat. The, but it's but what I like about it is Is it what was so bad about it, it in your opinion? It, you could hear the echoes. Like you could hear the yeah. echoes of uh, you could hear the hollowness of the recording studios. It was mm. dreadful. Yeah. So mm. Which I, I guess you need to do a listen of since we're going to be recording that episode tomorrow too. So, oh no, I've listened to it. I, I just, of course, I, I listened to it on speakers rather than headphones. So I probably mm. missed that. But yeah, I'll take your word for but it. But I, it's one of those things where, as dreadful as the sound was, and I will just tell you, I, the first episode didn't really care for the story that much. No, it was I get that. still. It was still one of those things where, oh, this is just an ep- one episode of three or uh, of four, and we're going to go to a new place, a new setting. We're going to get some new things. Yeah, th- did the four-parters kind of wear on me, especially, you know, towards the end? Yes, they did. But like right now, I will take a single episode, four-part you know, story rather than these two-hour box set or three episode box set things like i'm i don't like it sir mm. no 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 i don't like it either i think it's i think it's rubbish well and here's what i'd love um I, I, a while back when we did our uh what is it 151 to 200 main range review or whatever and i started going through certain things and I could not, you know, I basically did a Liam basically coming up with 35 of my favorite ones that were in within 50 or whatever, because they were just 50 of your favorites. Exactly. They, they were just <laughs> too many. from 151 to 200 of the main range. I feel is the probably best 50 chunk uh, episode or, you know, stories out of them all from, you know, one to 275. I think those are the best 50 chunks there. And I started re-listening to them. And one of the things that like really popped up, and maybe if I remember, I'm talking to myself now in post-production, I need to find an aspect of We're an Isle because in the cast and crew commentary, basically Nick Briggs admitted they're like, they're looking at all the, the download or the pre-order numbers, and there is a massive spike for one pre-order specifically and that was we're in aisle or i'm not sure if it was is that the we're in one with the sixth doctor and mm-hmm. we're in aisle. We're in aisle. they yeah. basically were like oh my gosh people really love the we're in they wanted a story with the we're in we saw our numbers kind of go right here and then there was a massive spike up which to me means it went up just for that one episode because people wanted a we're in story and then it went back down to regular i wish big finish would be a little bit more forthcoming and discussing what has worked what you know where they see their spikes obviously you know you're going to get a return audience for dalek stuff or whatever but besides that like what else it drives people to Big Finish. And with the box sets, are there more people being driven to the, the, the Big Finish or are there more people being driven off by Big Finish oh, because mm. of the box set format? I, I'd be really curious well, and I wish they would just come out and be a little can, bit more... Yeah. From what I can tell from the Big Finish, this is a group, you know, it's, it's people are, have been moaning about the box sets and, you know, prices and, you know, so it does seem that prices are a thing. Yeah. And this is one thing I think Big Finish have done very well in uh, recent times is introducing the audio novels that, you know, the, the, because mm. rather than just doing all these sets of little stories, whatever, you've got a big eight or nine hour long story with a lot of scope, with a lot of sweep that's got time to breathe, that really can go in depth and i can say without exception they have been excellent well it's kind of why i, so, I want more 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 more, more benny you know audiobooks mm. so uh humphrey just a quick question to you uh while they're away mm-hmm. do you find the audiobooks more or less like on the level of the target 
novelizations from the classic era, or are these kind of their own thing, their own beasts that kind of go a little bit further than the, the target novelizations? What do you, what what are these like? These are more on the level of say like the Virgin novels of the nineties, um, or the BBC Past Doctor novels. You know, they're because they're longer. They're because your typical target novel with the uh exception of things like dalek master plan and sharder and one or two others um tend in audio to be between four and five hours you know there are a few exceptions but that is the rule Mm -hmm. whereas as i say these are more like probably seven or eight hours at least on the whole Mm -hmm. so they're a bit bigger they're a bit longer so they are just their stories with scope. There's not that the others weren't, but they're they're stories that can take their time. But not that doesn't mean they're slow. It's just there's plenty of room to breathe. There's plenty of room for character development. There's you know there's plenty of room for twisty, turny, interesting side bits even and yes they're very like some of the novels that were released in the 90s um and that's not a bad thing (laughs) that's cool i I like that you said that they're more like the virgin novelizations because you know like i think we've discussed you know those novels or some of the target novelizations near the very end of the target novelizations run that's when you had what Ben Aronovich kind of add to the um, Remembrance of the Daleks. You had, you know, uh, what's this, Mark Platt add to Ghostlight, which I've heard. If yeah. you read the book, it's actually a little bit more understandable what's going on compared to what happened in the TV version of Ghostlight. I, I've always been mm. intrigued to pick up the book and read that just because... Uh, I, I've heard Ghostlight is well liked by some people, and like well highly regarded by an even smaller minority. And then there's a whole bunch of people that are just confused beyond all get out. And I am one of the ones that is just confused beyond all get out with Ghostlight. Hmm. You don't do both though, do you? At the same time. Not yet. Ugh. That's why I drink tea and not coffee, because it has the same effect on me. If I drink too much coffee, I'm like, yep. Uh, Humph was telling me about the Big Finish novels. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we were just discussing how they're akin to the 90s Virgin books. I mean, it could be interesting. Like I said, I I want more Benny novels, honestly. You know, filling those gaps in the in, in the Benny stuff, I'll be happy. I think we'll get them. I think we just need Lisa Bauman to come back and that that mm. will happen at her own speed sure oh so did you see that they've announced a whole new uh, a bunch of directors from big finish joining directors and producers now i think briggs needs to take a step back oh yeah yeah C- could we uh yes i i would love to delve into that i do actually ah uh, let's delve into it right now I am going to play a clip. I got this from the cast and crew commentary of the first Doctor, the Itcherton incident, because I, th- I, I, I was listening to it, and I'm like, I don't actually feel comfortable with what is being discussed. And I kind of put myself in the place of people who are working at Big Finish, and I'm like, yeah, I feel bad for them because well here if you haven't listened to it here is this uh i i nicknamed this clip nick briggs dictator half jokingly but think about it hello i'm nick briggs and i am the director of the first doctor adventures i'm also the writer of the incheton incident Hello, I'm Mark Wright, and I am the producer of The First Doctor Adventures. I think Nick's script is superb, and it's always interesting when you have Nick directing a script he's written, because I think it must 
you know, that he must have a different approach to that. And I love, you know, something I've really enjoyed over this last couple of years on these box sets is is working with Nick Moore, getting to know Nick Moore. And we've come to, I think we have a really good working relationship, which I'm hoping is going to continue over several box sets to come on both the first Doctor Adventures and the second Doctor Adventures. It's just a very lovely thing. Mm. It's all Nick, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Like, j- just out of curiosity, put yourself in the shoes of Mark Wright. Now, granted, it sounds like they do have a good relationship or whatever, but he's supposed to be, like, you know, kind of overseeing this box set. But you have Nick Briggs, the writer of the Itcherton incident. He also is the director of the Itcherton incident. So, how comfortable would you regardless you know he is up there in the big finish you know board i'm not sure board of directors but he's up there with yeah yes and so so how comfortable would you be again you it sounds like there's friendship and understanding but are, are you likely to pull more of your punches because you are you know you're you're criticizing a founder you're criticizing a board of director like Mm -hmm. i don't know i put myself in mark wright's shoes and i'd be like i even if it was garbage but yes it sounds good to me sir Mm. yeah Uh, it's yeah i mean i think personally because let's be honest briggs directs so much and writes so much and he's written more dross in the past 10 years than good yeah uh like one to one hundred, he was writing on form. He was and dark eyes. He wrote some pretty good stuff, but then after yeah. then, it just sort of went downhill. And I, I think, mm. like, I'm glad they're getting all this this new blood in, and all that. I think I think new blood, new blood would only start damaging Big Finish when they start hiring new blood to tick boxes. Yeah, yeah. which luckily they've towed that line. They have. I mean, look at. Lisa McMullen, you know, a female writer, but knows Doctor Who. Certainly. You know? Jackie Rayner. Una McCornack, Jackie Jackie Rayner. You know, all good Doctor Who writers. Um, That, that what's his name? Patel. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Chandri yeah. Patel. Oh. Yeah. Whatever his name is. Yeah. You know, a really good writer. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Knows, so you knows know, continue top. and continue what they're doing there, and hire people who know the show, know the characters well, and can clearly write for them, well, rather than just ticking boxes, as, as, as Legion said. Yeah, they've got that new producer in, uh, producer and director in, who they hired because she, she came from where did she come from? I think she came from Israel, somewhere like that. Yeah, and um, she's r- written for she, a she, story, isn't she, as well? Yeah, she's written a War Doctor story. But the reason they hired her is because during lockdown, she kept pestering them because she'd written a radio drama. And in her role-playing games, they did Doctor Who. Mm. And you were like, well, that's, you know, we're getting back to the fandom. Yes. But I think personally now, Briggs needs to step back from directing writing and just be like a silent producer like Jason Hay Gallery. Yeah, and just yeah. all act, you know, just just get him in to, to act roles. Or in this case, just monsters. Because okay, he's we got need a Dalek recognizable 17 voice. Briggs, get in here. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you know, um, and and yeah, let let Doctor Who thrive on fans. New blood, you know. I think that's that's where Doctor Who should be. And that's where Doctor Who's best at. I mean, look at Big Finish in the early years. That was just fans, basically. Yeah. With, well with a bit of money service, behind them, be making audio. One to 100, you know, was literally, you know, it was pretty much Gary Russell doing it. Yeah. And then Nick Briggs obviously took over from... 2007? Gary Russell, and we had the first dark age of... Big finish. Oh. <laughs> I like that. The dark age of big finish. <laughs> Number one. Well, I mean, it's, it's, 
you know, it's it's like comic books. You had the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, the Modern Age. We're very much in the Modern Age now with Big Finish. The Golden uh-huh. Age, I'd say, it's come and gone. Was one to circular time. I think mm. the Silver Age, which is more tarnished silver, more of a pooey brown, <laughs> is like ninety one to one hundred and fifty. That's ninety. And then the Bronze Age, is so- circular time. Circuit of Time 90, is 91. No, 92. No, 90's Year of the Pig. Yeah, 90 is Year of the Pig. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. I got that wrong. But yeah, then 150 up to 200 is pretty good. Yeah. You know, even up to like 250 is pretty good. And then we hit the modern age from 250 onwards, and we've got a couple of good ones from 250 up to 275, but nothing stand really out. that much standout-ish. And then we've just hit the modern age, which is it. Th- there is more, uh, more shit than there good. is more. I was going to put more tactful than that, but yeah. Well, less is the more. Only, what is good. Uh, the, the only box set, sorry, that, that comes to mind that is classic and is really good was Blood and Steel. You know, David Warner's practically last contribution. Final, yeah. You know, that was fantastic. Yeah, it was. It was. Wouldn't you love a, like, comic book golden era Doctor Who story where, because, like, what was it? There is a, somebody brought this up to me because they were trying to discuss comics or whatever. I'm like, I I don't know much about certain things. I'm just really getting into it. They were talking about this one uh, Superman story where Superman was shooting, like, miniature Supermen out of his hands at the villain. What? I mean, wouldn't you love uh, like some sort of like weird thing where like, you know, it's a it's a golden age story where he's just like, you know what? I'm just going to replicate myself into six other people right now and suddenly just boom. Is just something so like 30s and 40s absurd. I would love yes. for a story like that. Just so absurd Ooh. that it is ridiculous. Yeah. Huh? Talking of Golden Age comics and completely going on an A-side, have you seen what's coming out late this month on Blu-ray? No, no. what is coming out? The Superman Fleischer cartoons. Oh, those are good. Oh, Fleischer? my dad bought me a, a, a couple. Of, oh, they are, they're about 10 to 12 minutes long. They mm. are aesthetically like the most pleasing to the eye I, uh, oh yeah, oh I, I I guess I'll have to buy that. When's it set? Or when was it done? I, I've never heard of them. Are they... Oh, it's done in nineteen forty-two to nineteen forty-nine. Oh wow! Okay, interesting. Yeah, who did that? They're good. The, uh, Warner Brothers. Fleischer. Or... Fleischer. Oh, okay. Fleischer. Right. Okay. Which is now owned by Warner Brothers. Yeah. But um, for years they basically. Like, I don't I don't know if you've seen them, Brett, on videotape. They ha- we had the really crappy transfers. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I, I had we and, had three of them growing up, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had like two or three. And I think it was about ten years ago, one of the original animators died. And it turned out he'd nicked all the negatives. <laughs> <laughs> so they literally went, hang on, we can make some money off this. And nice. they're, you know, they're 35 mil animation negatives so they are going to be good when they come out yeah did you speaking of animation and stuff did you ever finish um metropolis brett oh yeah absolutely fantastic i thoroughly i think i've watched it two times since it is just like i again there is too bad there's no audio description but i will tell you i would if i were you if you just wanted some good music to play in the background, just have that going. The music oh, it's a great is soundtrack. phenomenal from start to finish. It is like I could in fact I probably should just like, you know, while I'm around the house, just kind of play that and just have it going on it on my TV and just kind of do this and that because it is to me one of the best soundtracks that I've heard. Like when I think of stellar soundtracks, for some reason, Braveheart is one of them that comes to mind. 
Mm. And like, I would say I'd pick and choose like, you know, a couple of Star Wars here and there. And, you know, you have Jurassic Park, but from beginning to end of Metropolis, fantastic soundtrack. Thoroughly love it. Great movie. In fact, after that, I went and I started watching old other black and white er, and um, silent movies, but none can compare to Metropolis. Closest one, I would say, would probably be the uh, classic silent uh, Dracula one, uh, Nosferatu. Oh, Nosferatu. That's a good one, too. That is Hmm. a good one. And that has an amazing soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Let's get to these reviews, shall we? All right. With that, we will go to the February 2023 reviews, starting with the Ninth Doctor Adventures, Shades of Fear, which has three stories, The Color of Terror by Lizzie Hopley, The Blooming Menace by James Kettle, and Red Darkness by Roy Gill. So I've listened to none of these, so I will turn the time over to whoever has. Nor have I. That'd be me and you then, Lige. That would be me and you. Mm. So I the, okay. Oh, that was weird. Now my, <laughs> my, my lady A went bloop. So the it's three episodes. Obviously, as Brett has said, he's literally said them. I can't remember the names of them. And there is very much an overarching story between the first and third parts, and it's all to do with the colour of fear. Mm. Because Which is- Red in this case. Not to be confused with the colour of... What's yellow? Yellow's anger, isn't it? Uh, yellow's fear in the Green Lantern. No, yellow is fear. Uh, oh, yellow's fear. And red yeah. is red is anger, yeah. It's red in Doctor Who is the colour of fear. And uh-huh. it's basically a different... Like, like They basically sold it to us as the Ninth Doctor versus the Vashta Narada, which technically in the third part it is. It, yeah. It's basically... Aliens that are very similar to the Vashta Narada. They live in shadow, but they're red. They live in anything red. And they will just eat you. Ooh. Yeah, it's really interesting. And in in the third story, it's a combination. They basically breed with the Vashta Narada. So they live in everything red and also the shadows. Ooh. And they kind of get a bit more because... and, And they kind of get a bit more autonomy don't they because of it almost yes um yeah they they like in the first story they're very much a pack animal you know they're basically doing things on they're killing people on instinct because they need the food in the third story it's basically they bred with the vashnarada and the vashnarada have given them sentience intelligence so they're hunting yeah yeah and they're picking off people one by one and like they're they're turning, it's really really cool. And what I like about the third story is there's a talking guide dog. Yep, there is <laughs> called Doyle, who is coming yep. back and he's a companion in the Ninth Doctor Adventures in the next box set. Yep, and oh, wow. the story for that one is actually a sequel to the Green Death. Interestingly, yes, the Ooh. the one that's got Doyle in, um, but. This story is just, it's really interestingly placed because it's like working backwards. Episode three, I'll get to episode two, but episode three is very much a colony gone to waste, been forgotten by the Earth Empire. They're doing their own thing. Uh, experiments release the Vashta Narada that cause all the problems. The other story relating to colour is a lot more, uh, well, how am I trying to describe it? It's a lot more, it's, it's, yeah. It's set in a, in a, in a bookshop, isn't it? In a, um. Yeah. Oh, it's got, yes. It's got, it's, a, it's got a charity Frank shop. Skinner. Yeah. Charity shop. And it's got Frank Skinner in it. And, um, his relationship with, oh, who was it? Oh, was it a, a woman or, a, um, a guy he takes on at the end is like a lot like is like a oh that lodger. young lad yeah yeah um you know and, and it's a very human was... story but it, it is it's what fear can basically make you do mm. um and like they basically 
the the alien that is hunting people basically because somebody is so bitter and twisted and also scared they basically take possession of her which is mm. really it's it's like a very confined story the first one very claustrophobic yeah uh, but there's a lot more humor in it and then episode 3 is very dark now it is the second story which Liam didn't like <laughs> Is my personal no, favourite of this I, box set. No, I didn't mind it. It was okay. It was there was just elements of it, but like I can see why you why you liked it. Yeah, you know, th- there were funny lines in it. Um It's just a farce. It is. It's yeah. basically giant plants are coming to life and kidnapping young gentlemen around the town. And it's the majority of the story takes place in a gentleman's club where no girls are allowed. And you know what the massive cliche is. One of the members is a girl, of course, a girl who yep. nobody has realized is a girl who is in love with one of the young gentlemen. And they're all trying to be eaten by plants. <laughs> hmm. oh. And it's, it's so farcical, but it's, it's funny. fun. And it's like the yeah. the ninth doctor's the ninth doctor is just going round like I have absolutely no idea why any of this is happening. Like he's nope. like, does nobody realise that giant plants aren't you, you know a, a kidnapping young men and and they're sort of falling in love with with said plants. It's 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 yeah. And then the young men yeah. are falling in love with said plants and then going around the town parading these giant carnivorous <laughs> plants. It's like. Little Shop of Horrors meets Dead Ringers version of, J- of Jacob Reese Mogg, isn't it? Almost PG Woodhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Nanny. Honestly, I think it is. It is. Yeah. It's. it's... I, I think it's right up Humphrey Street. That sounds hilarious. I'm going to have to listen to that. So, uh, just out of curiosity, I'm looking mm. at some of the reviews for this, and this is uh, this one has is the least liked out of the, the three of them really? on the time scales. Mm. So here's one of them. It says the middle entry of the set is by far the most forgettable one. The blooming menace is about the doctor dealing with giant flowers infecting local inhabitants. In this case, the upper class characters who have been dealing with a nearby uh, professor who specializes in these flowers, suffering from painful overacting, simplistic plot and an oddly short runtime. There's a lot of negative things to say about this and pretty much nothing positive except for Eccleston's performance. And then somebody else says, this episode, let's see, was the hardest one to listen to. It is probably the worst thing. Uh, let's see. It is probably the worst thing ever, but most because it is kind of boring. So those were at least two of the people that really slammed this Story. Yeah, those people are wrong. <laughs> you know, those those people probably went, hey, Ravagers was excellent. Probably, yeah. Well, and, and I bring this up basically because in a previous podcast, we were talking and I believe, I think the three of us were shredding James Kettle, who is the writer for this. And yes, one of is. the things that you brought up with, well, he's a comedy writer. And so you tend to like this one because the comedy hit on all cylinders, I'm going to guess. Yes. Yes, it did. Um, So I've listened to some James Kettle comedy since, and his strengths very much are comedy. And when Doctor Who does comedy, it can either sink or float. And I think when you've got a professional comedy writer... It works. Like, he's written some episodes of Ed Reardon's Week, which is one of my favourite oh, comedies. Has he? Yes. But he's also written some Newsweek sketches, which is a hilarious panel show. So, but no, he's he's a competent... He's a good comedy writer. Yeah. He's like Nev Fountain, isn't he? If, if he does comedy, he does yes. it well. He's, he does very British comedy, though. Mm. Mm. Which is why I... You know, it may translate to some people overseas, but it, I can see why it doesn't. Well, and I bring this up because he was the one that wrote the Terra Nostra that you were loving so much. The Love Vampires, he wrote that one. 
Mm. He did the Unbound Doctor of War Genesis. So that oh. is something mm. that uh, was shared, or at least one of the episodes for that. Uh, he did Missing the Monk, which, according mm. to the reviews mm. on Timescales, was not well liked at all. He did the Blazing Hour, which I know Humphrey or it's uh, Liam really loved. I liked it. I thought it was, Blazing Hour was not that bad. And he did uh, two monks and one mistress for the Missy box set. And he also did one that I really enjoyed uh, in uh, Die River Song, The Terror of the Suburbs, which was kind of fun. Oh, the, oh yeah. that was the one with Liz. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he the did The Hunting that. Season from the Ninth Doctor, which was blah. But I think, you know, he's getting better as he goes on. And if he can bring more of his comedy chops into it, Mm. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So, what would you what would you rate the Night of the Doctor box set? So, we're at a point now where Chris Eccleston has done more Big Finish than he has done TV show. We are at the oh. end of the second mm. season, and I think so far I've rated two box sets of series one highly, and two box sets of series two very highly. And this one, I'm going to have to give an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I'd agree. So that's it definitely three. Is 8 out of 10 sort of region, isn't it? I think, yeah, I think Eccleston now, from Series 2, has hit his stride. Mm. Mm. I mean, there's still stories I liked in Series 1, you know, in, in, in box sets, you know, certain stories. But there's box sets, yeah. I think box sets 3 and 4 gave us the best selection of stories from series one. I think box sets one, two, and four gave us the best stories from series two. But mm. I come back to the point of we ought to be getting monthly releases. You know, come yes. on. Four box sets of Eccleston. You could, three stories in a piece. That's 12 months. That's one a month. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you sell that for eight quid, Ten ninety nine for a CD, yeah. Deal for the whole series. They'd be yeah. laughing, and people then can pick and choose. Yeah, but you know what would also be a cool thing they could do with like new series stuff, which I'd no. really like to see. No, what? I already know what you're going to say. What? No, multi parts. Why not? No. Yeah. No. No. Doesn't work. Doesn't work for new series. No, not at all. No. Do- new series and old series, there is one big divide that obviously I think needs to stick. And the new series, you have longer episodes, but shorter stories. Mm-hmm. Like I think maybe a two-parter, like they do in the TV series, but each big finished production as a whole links in with its TV period. You know, yeah. I, I can get behind a, 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 an occasional two-parter for the new series, especially because one of, to me, one of the yeah. better, at least eight Doctor stories to me was the uh, Dalek story that came out in November, which was a two-part, yes. one-hour story, which was just yeah. phenomenal. And yes, yeah. and I, 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 appre- like I yeah, yeah. But you don't you don't have to do it consistently. Not like what, how we're kind of complaining about you know the classic Doctor era where. You know, and you. I love that you brought up the only one three-part story up until you get to the, you know, McCoy era where there was a couple of them or whatever. Like we, we need to focus on like the storytelling of the time. You can upscale it to you know more faster pacing stuff, but also, you know, don't don't stop the, with these one-hour stuff for the classic doctors. It just doesn't yes. work. It doesn't work, no. Yeah, yeah. just like I, I didn't. Just it, like four parters, four parters wouldn't work for modern. No, because it's a different way of storytelling. Nope, totally agree. Sorry, Humph, that's three against one. <laughs> Let's see. Just one second. No, I I agree, I agree with Humph. No, I don't. <laughs> Shut up, other legion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Humphrey, it's uh, three, uh, two against three. So you know you have. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Time Paradox Legion could be fed to the Zalek as well. 
All right. right. Um, let's Linovich move on. Linovich limitation, this <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the first Doctor Adventures, The Demon's Song. Now, I, this is the first time I listened to Peter Noonan as the Doctor. And before we even begin to this, I will tell you one thing that I, I nearly did not listen to the entirety of this box set because I feel as though, and I'm not sure if it was, how it was written, it could have been written, it could have been the direction also, but I feel as though from time to time, during a compassionate line to talking to Dodo, we would have like bipolar first doctor that would suddenly just start shouting. And it happened in both episodes. And yeah, I'm not sure. That was strange. So, what, did you, did you see, hear that too? Yeah. Okay. Like I did not listen to the first Peter Noonan box set. So I don't know if that's how it was, but I don't know if it's again, the direction or if that's how he's reading it, because if if that's how he's reading it, I'm kind of almost put off by Peter Noonan, first doctor. Uh, I don't know. What do you what do you two think about that? If if you notice it at all. So, yes, I get what you're saying, mm. but he's he's trying to channel his inner Hartnell. Yeah, like I occasionally try to channel my inner dicks. <laughs> Take that as you will. (laughs) (laughs) And I was watching season two. In fact, I've powered through season two in the past couple of weeks. And Hartnell does do it. Does he? Actually, that's true, to be fair, thinking about it. Now you mention it. Well, I mean, so... Just one second. So I did re-listen to or watch a couple of classic episodes. And to me, the only person he ever does it to is Chesterton. But he doesn't do it to Vicky. Like, he's more compassionate. And to me, what, again, was off-putting is he, <laughs> o- he only has these, you know, it's, he goes from very compassionate to massive bipolarness. And I don't to know. To Dodo. And it's only to Dodo. Yes. Yeah, but look at how Dodo gets, gets left. Yeah. Oh, that is true. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Off screen. I don't know. Through a phone Dodo? call. Who's Dodo? I don't know anybody <laughs> called Dodo. <laughs> I'm off now. Bye. <laughs> yeah. It's basically, basically how the war machine ends. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I... He's just like, you broke into my TARDIS. You expect me to be kind to you. Okay, I'll I'll tolerate you and your changing accent, you freak. But, <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> if I'm going to be compassionate to you, I'm also going to rip shreds out of you. I don't know. I I quite like Stephen Noonan. I mean, yeah, I do. I do. I think he he's definitely got better as he's gone on. Um, like Tim Trelaw. Yes. Yeah. Now, what I will say is the the demon song, which is the first story, mm-hmm. is a two I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I I, I stopped listening did. to it. Five minutes in, I could not take it. So, I did like it, but, and it is a huge but, I think it would work better, not as a two-parter, as one a one-parter. Parter, yeah. For the eighth, ninth, tenth, or eleventh Doctors. Yes, I would agree, actually. Mm. Because two-parters, apart from The Edge of Destruction, don't work... For the first Doctor. No. No. Yeah. No, I, I did not like what I listened to of Demon Song. And the, here here's what I, I again, I, I've made mention of it before. I'm tired. If, if we get a, you know, you know, COVID-19, like, storyline five years from now, seven years from now, okay. I The amount of stress that I went through in my profession has caused me to the instant it pops up, there is a like a kind of a twilight zone, um, you know, black, uh, whatever it's called on Netflix or whatever comic series that I was invested into. They did a black lockdown. Uh, what, what is it? Black mirror. Uh, black mirror. Yeah, there we are. Um, 
they did a COVID-19 lockdown issue. I've walked away from it completely. I washed my hands of the whole thing. I I need time away from this thing. I I, I feel as though mm. like I I don't know if there there's mass I I probably have like lots of like massive anxiety about the whole thing, but I the instant that went on, I was like, hey, I'll, I'll, let's power through. I, I didn't really listen to much for this month. I'm gonna, And then the doctor basically going bipolar on Dodo, I was like, okay, hey, that's it. And so I, that's when I kind of pieced out of Demon Song. And I would have pieced out of the second one, but I was in the middle of nowhere in a walk, and I only had that on my MP3 player that I was listening to. So, because I'm trying to, like, de- you know, world myself. So I left my cell phone at home, which was a, I guess an okay mistake because I would have given up on the interesting project early on also. But that, that's where I come from for the, the demon song. I did. Yeah, do you think right. I gave up on it way too soon or what? What, what are your thoughts? Um, I think you gave up on it way too soon, but mm. I think if you listen to it fully, I think you will basically be like, huh, this doesn't work for the first Doctor. Hmm. Yeah, I it's felt too that. modern a setting for the first Doctor. Yeah, the the first Doctor works well on other planets, alien planets, and certain times in our history and early, late modern history, if that makes sense. So... I don't know. Yeah, like anything, the... anything past the seventies with the first Doctor. Just somehow no. However, see the interesting the thing second is, Doctor, I yes, don't... but not not the first Doctor. So the first Doctor for me only really works in modern times if he's not in the thick of it, which you know he's in London. That is base. That is the capital city of Britain. You know. The hustle and bustle. Yes. Whereas the previous modern era story for the first Doctor was the miniaturist. Yeah, that was we- that was weird. That was weird, but it worked because yeah. it was yeah, very it rural. Mm. Whereas if you put, you know, Bill Hartnell going, "Oh yes, I'm going to use a contactless machine to pay." Yes, yeah. hmm. hmm. yes, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. It's not quite right, is it? No, it just doesn't no. work. So what would you rate the demon song as? <sighs> five out of ten. Five. Distinctly average. Four point five. Mm. Interesting. But uh-huh. saying that, if it was a different doctor, which is, you know, I, I know I keep waxing on about, uh. I think I'd give it a higher rating. See, huh. I think that would have really worked if it was a Jamie... Ben and Polly in Second Doctor Story. No. No? No. Because I don't think, I think it's too short. Only reason I say that is because of the whole, you know, music element. And I think the Second Doctor is the only one who's really been sort of really musical. Twelfth Doctor. And, uh, true. Yeah, he would have gotten oh out his... Uh... <laughs> oh, my God. It works as Twelfth Doctor Story. Oh. Mm. Oh. Get out his guitar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh man. Uh Oh yeah, that would work. Well, uh I will tell you the uh, average re- review for this story on the time scales is an 8.0. It is Wow. Well like too high. fans. Too high, yeah. Too high. Yeah, too high. Yeah. So the second oh also just um interesting fact so the writer for this episode, Bob Ayers. James Kettle? No, Bob Ayers. Only thing he's written so far for Big Finish. Mm. Mm. Huh. Which, again, I think... Th- I've said it before and I'll say it again. This was the best part about the Companion Chronicles. You could, you know, or, like, get your feet the main wet. Range. Well, no, but I would just say it, either the main range, like half hour stories, or, you know, the Companion Chronicles. Get your feet wet, but like mm. to just be thrown in as your first story, I mean, 
I don't know. I, maybe I'm just like not ho- – generally, I try to be optimistic. And here – I am the guy that was constantly saying, don't worry. The flux season will get better. I, I was beating yeah. that drum. It will. It will. It will get better. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> it will get better. Please so, get better. <laughs> so I, I am the guy that is optimistic. But when it comes to new writers, I'm very pessimistic. Because I'm like, well, what have you done? How have you gotten here? Like, uh, granted, they could have had some other career, some other w- place, and you know, they could be doing well. But I, I guess I tend to lean more into the pessimism era when it is a new writer because of, I don't know, maybe the last 25 episodes of especially the main range. Mm. So what was your feeling, Brett, on the second story? The in in the Incherton incident. incident. Uh, so I was. So the interesting thing about it was, is I went in again. I was didn't even check to see who was writing it. I was. I was kind of going back and forth. I, I would have ended a lot earlier because, again, I'm not sure Stephen Noonan has the the first Doctor's voice down, and I mean voice as in like I discussed before, which just irked me. However, when he started like berating that, uh, let me pull up the um, the cast and crew on here. When he started berating uh, the Virginia, the 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 Canadian, which I was when she said yeah. Canadian, and she was like, "Y'all, I'm from Canada," and I, I'm sitting there going, "No, <laughs> you're not." Like, not only are you not from America, you're definitely not from Canada. Like, and I, I'm I, granted. I, I, you know, this was the story took place like in like the 40s or whatever. But for somebody to be like, oh, you're from Canada. Oh, well, at least you're not one of those lousy Americans. She was like, oh, well, hey, just a little cutesy little thing here. I do have a gun, and uh, I am from America, and uh, you're gonna have to let me through this blockade here, fella, because. I know that you constables in uh, in England over here, they don't carry a gun. And I'm like, uh, I hate you. <laughs> However, I found, <laughs> even though her accent annoyed me the entire time, I appreciated her going back and forth but with the doctor because it was almost like a doctor and Ian Chesterton type of a thing. He even was on purpose, you know, I think on purpose getting his her name wrong. Like, you know, she was like, Virginia, my name is Virginia. And he'd be like, okay, Valerie, over here. And then she would <sighs> like- Come over here, Veronica. And then she would stick it to him by going, okay, old timer. And he's like, don't call me old timer. And so I, I kind of liked that because it was like it was like Ian was there, but it was not Ian at the same time. So I like the banter between the two main characters or whatever. I mm. like the whole paranoia, the Soviet, the Red Scare type of a thing that was going on at that time post-World War II. I like that there is kind of like... And unrest uh, is according to the whole storyline with this, you know, American who now, even though America and the UK were allies during the war, there's still a level of untrust. And I really thought that was kind of fun. The only thing that I was really curious about is I was like, I I wonder if this whole Incherton incident was actually based on a true story because like I was that was what like really had me intrigued. I you know, I found out that, you know, it wasn't, but I, I really enjoyed for the most part, this story, because again, uh, the cold war, the spy thing, it actually, to me, kind of started feeling out at one point in time to be, you know, Liam's favorite second doctor story of all time that he, you know, loves because there's political intrigue and, you know, a secret society and stuff like that. So I, I I was kind of curious to see how well they were going to get into that kind of storyline. What? Ten. Did you say something? No, I think it was Legion. Oh, no, I, that's what no, I thought. I, th- I thought Legion said something. So No, I think you're talking to the Alexa, I think. Oh. 
Did somebody Sorry, just Sorry, I need to, I need to turn my charge. Okay. So yeah, I it was a fun story. It was kind of what I expected. I mean, like the the whole like I I feel as though it was super obvious that they, you know, who the villain of the story was going to be once well, there's essentially two villains of the story. And but I, I feel as though the second villain of the story that kind of came out of nowhere, which was just like, I, you know, she's sitting there twirling her mustache. Like, she, she's not as innocent as you think she is. I, but you know what? At the end of the day, it was a fun story. I think I, I, I enjoyed it. I, sign me up for more political, like, spy espionage Doctor Who stories. I think I'd be all for stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, it was a good one, that one. Mm. It was. Definitely it was better than the Demon was, Song. It, yes. It was almost Avengers meets Doctor Who. Mm. Not not as in Iron Man, Captain America, as in do 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 do. Yeah, yeah. I I I I, under, I understood that. I in no way would I be like, yeah, I wonder what the Doctor Who and Thor would do. To, like, what that would that combination be like? Huh? No, I I knew exactly what you're talking. Clearly, about. Clearly, it'd be Doctor Who and Rocket. That would uh, be a good combo. That would be a good combo right there. And then, you mm-hmm. know, you'd have the Dodo companion, which would be Groot, where, yeah, oh, what was that? I am Groot. Oh, no, I'm just going to leave I you behind. <laughs> <laughs> Dodo, look, I've sent you a friend. I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> he's got more conversational skill than you, and his <laughs> accent doesn't change, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sew the intro. Oh, I'm bitter against Dodo. Uh, uh. So what about you, Liam? What did you think about the Itcherton incident? Yeah, I appreciated the banter, as you say, between the Doctor and um, what's her face? Uh, Virginia. 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 And I liked that it was longer. You know, it definitely had more room to breathe. And um, yeah, definitely fleshed out more. So All right. Yeah, more, so- more, more longer stories. I think. All right. So, Humphrey, did you say what you thought about the Itcherton? I liked this one. Again, longer, so much better, you know, length, more room to breathe and grow and develop. And I thought it was an interesting time. I like the fact that it was after the war rather than In during the war. the war. I thought that mm. was a nice change. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I liked the whole spy thing. I thought that really worked with Doctor Who and suited the first Doctor really well, actually. I thought it was a very good story. No, I would give this story probably about, uh, I'd say a 7.5. I, I, I enjoyed yeah, I'd it. I agree. High re listen value, mm. no, but it was an enjoyable listen nonetheless. Yes. Yeah, I gave it a 7. I agree. Um, for me, I think. I give it a 7.5. Nice. All right. Uh, Next, the Doctor Chronicles, the 11th Doctor, all of time and space. And I will tell you, before we get into this, I I have not listened to a single uh, 11th Doctor Chronicles, but the next box set, the companion that looks like she is cyberized on the uh, cover art, I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued by that. That's the main companion. Oh, that'll be Valerie. Yeah. Valerie is awesome. Like, I really like her as a companion. Yeah, she she is a cool companion. So, yeah. Uh, so in this story, or in this box set, there's three stories, All of Time and Space by Ellery Quest. You have The Yearn Ugh. by Angus Duncan and The Curiosity Shop by James Goss. <sighs> Move up the chaps. Daddy's arrived. <laughs> I thought... When this series was announced, it was going to be absolute garbage. Now, the first box set in this final season of Jake Dugman was incredible. This box set was very, very good, if not a wee bit meta. Like, the first episode was just so trippy. I didn't like it. Like... No, I I can understand why, because it was basically a fictional world 
where the Doctor and Valerie were created by this playwright who was pitching Doctor Who as a stage play. Like, it was very meta, and it just turned out that the fiction was, it was basically sentient fiction. Right. Which, when I say that, it's trippy as hell. Because it is trippy as hell. Oh, yeah. Like, rather than theme tune, they literally had this guy pitching this stage play, and he was like, and I thought the orchestra could come in sort of like this, dum de dum dum de dum dum de dum dum de dum and it, that's literally the theme literally. of the episode. It is so yeah, because he gets cut off. He's like, stop, but, stop, stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then you know we get past all of time and space, and unfortunately, all of time and space could put some people off. Yeah, did me. But then we get to the second story, which is very much a base under siege story. You know, Valerie gets a girlfriend. The monster is basically a, an eldritch horror from the ends of time that just wants to eat people's faces. Yeah. And it's so second doctor, it's criminal. It is, but because it's but but because it's eleventh doctor, it works. Yeah. Mm. And then the old curiosity shop. Oh, really good story. Really, really good. So the basically the doctor loses his memory and is re-piecing his memory together, but is using Valerie and I by using I mean literally using, using her to basically like throughout all this story he's he's creating a device like he's forgotten everything but he knows that he needs to make this device and he basically kills Valerie to make this device because she's a cyborg and he's like oh I need this bit oh I need this bit at the end of it it's savage because she basically goes to him if I didn't have so much faith in you I could have died and rather than the doctor apologizing, he basically went, "Yeah, that's what happens when you travel with me." Oh, mm. Ooh. it is dark, but it is good. It is like this series is genuinely. Sh- you know, we've had six episodes so far. We're almost halfway through, and it's just been. I mean, we've had a couple of duds, like episodes three and episode four, but they you can't call them bad. Because they are they are good stories. It's just a shame that episodes one, two, five, and six have been incredible. No, th- no, three was the uh, Web of oh, time three one. was the Venice one, wasn't it? No, uh, the, the, two... the the time, the spider time one, one uh, spider spiders. thing. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, yeah, the sorry, Web of Time. So, yeah. yeah, that was three. Two was the Venice one with the weird mask. That's the one. Thing. Yeah, I was getting it mixed up, but mm. it was good. Mm. You know, it wasn't bad. It was good. It wasn't amazing, like episodes one, three, five, I'd say, six. I'd say all of time and space has been the weakest out of the whole uh, out of the whole box set. I really didn't like that episode because it was just so yes. weird, weird. Um, but you know the everything everywhere, which is the next box set. You know what the the final box set's going to be called? All at all once. at once. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, but. You know, everything everywhere is the eleventh doctor and a cyborg companion and the cyborg companion's girlfriend coming up against the Cybermen. Yeah, and Clara. Oh mm. And they think they found Clara, but she's homicidal and we'll be interested to see if it's Jenna Coleman. Mm. Hope it is. Yeah. I do. I mean, it probably won't. So be. far, there's only three cast members uh, announced. Obviously, Jacob Dudman, and then you have Valerie's uh, person, and then uh, Roanna. Sophia Inga. Yeah. So those are the only three people that have been announced, and those are the only people that are on the cover art for uh, the third box set, minus a, a Cyberman. I, yeah. I just want to just but share. Can I just say? Just one second. I, I want to share something. Real interesting with Liam. So the first mm-hmm. story, which you said was not good, written by Ellery Quest, would you like to guess how many episodes of Doctor Who None. this person has uh, one That one that, you know, of all of yeah. the time of space. So, yeah, yeah. one yeah. for that one. And then the other one, the second story, uh, Angus Duncan wrote... A Short Trips for Volume 12, and is, I'm just going to just double check this, 
is a voice actor in Beyond Bannerman Road on in Ronnie Takes Over the World and is also one of the voice huh. actors in the All of Time and Space. So for those two, for three of the two, one of them has done a couple short trips, the other one done nothing, and then of course we have James Goss. So Yeah. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, I, but, I just think it's no, interesting I, I, to I, just peel back that layer. Mm, what were you saying, Leech? Before what? That I'd never heard of James Goss. No, no. Before that, you were going to say something, and Brett said he wanted to say something first. I have no idea. Oh, lost the time. Oh, okay. Oh well, lost um, in but, time. No, I, I really, I really, I think it was we were talking, we were talking about Clara and Jenna Coleman, and you were going to say something, and then. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, no. I don't think she will be in it, and I don't actually think we'll we'll get a Jenna Coleman in it because she didn't like working for Big Finish when they did the uh, oh when they did the audio thing. go uh, mm. thing yeah mm. it's like Capaldi Capaldi won't do audio dramas no interesting no he won't no so what would you rate the Eleventh Doctor all of time and space minus the first story I'd give it a good seven out of ten um, with the first story. With the first story, 6.5. 8.5 for me. The last box set for Doctor Who for the month of February 2023 is the third Doctor Adventures, The Return of Joe Jones, which features three stories, Super Nature by Matt Fitton, The Conservators by Felicia Barker, and The Iron Shore, which I think is not a good title for the actual story, but is a good story. By Lizzie Hopley. Mm. The weakest story is written by someone who has only written yep. one big finish. Felicia Barker? Let's see. Yep. She mm. actually did a short trips in volume 11 and volume 12, but this is her first full range. Mm. She can't remind me the, right. what, the iron, what the Iron Shore was about again. That was the curse, wasn't well, it? Yeah, which should that's what oh. it should have been called. It should have been the curse of what oh, blah blah yes, blah yes. blah blah. Whatever the planet they were on. I did not like the title of the Iron Shore, but I think that that is by far the far superior story out of all of them. Even though I think you have the first story, which has oh, yes. a really good uh, you know, in memorandum to the actor who played Dr. J- Jones or whatever. I can't even think of what his first name is. but Cliff. But oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Cliff. I, I thought it, they did a really good job of mem- uh, you know, kind of doing an you know, in memorial too. And I love that, at least in the behind the scenes, they talked to uh, Katie Manning and they kind of left it up to her how she wanted to, you know, he, he could have still been alive if they wanted it to. And she decided to kind of go mm. in that direction, which I feel as though was a good memory to the character and also a good memory to the actor, which the last time we saw him was in The Green Death. So I, I really appreciated what they did mm. for that. I, I know and, you guys are... Yeah. And i tell you who, who I did like as well. I really liked the kind of companion in that story the what's her face <sighs> joe's friend dr dr lorna holmes yeah, one about the dog i'm sorry that's the one dr lorna holmes that's it lorna yeah yeah, dr. yeah lorna. I, I really like lorna that's, i really hope yes. they get her back um hmm. i thought she was you know a good actor and uh, you know a really cool character so I hope you they know, can bring her back at some point. In the first story, I was actually waiting for one thing that I was kind of curious about, which I um, I was actually waiting for the podcasting person that was kind of doing the interview for that person to kind of be playing like a conspiratorial part within the story. And I was kind of annoyed that it didn't happen, but I guess you could say kind of glad that it didn't happen because I was expecting it. Mm. I was just, I was mm. expecting her to die, but that didn't happen mean. either, which is a shame. But oh well. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the to me the biggest annoyance with the first story is, you know, you have this kind of created, you, you, like birds type of a situation with a created consciousness from alien gear. And like we talked about before, at the very end of the day, the mad scientist was just like, hey, oh, shut it down. All right, shut it. Guys, shut it down. Okay, we shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. What was that? Shut yes. it down. <laughs> shut it down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're shutting it down. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel as though also to the two best stories, the first one and the third one, I think could have been stretched actually into a four-parter. I, I especially the the last story. Yes. I feel as though yes. the last story w- c- had so many, so much potential to be turned into a four parter. Mm. The one thing I will say about the second story, though, is I did find it funny. I I, I found the plot kind of Futurama ish, kind of in s- <laughs> setup because you have this this society which you know you can't take any risks and bad things happen to you if you take risks and the the most and you think that the doctor has been sentenced to death but i love that he has like these like little uh not microorganisms i can't think of what but like essentially these things that have been implanted in them that that basically refrain him of all people to not take any risks. And I'm like, that is so like Futurama. Like, yes. it'd be like Fry. Like, you know, it, he'd be given something where he couldn't make any stupid decisions. And so he just stands there. Like, at one point in time, like Katie's or Joey's is like, all right, doctor, let's go. And he goes, I can't. I, apparently, escaping from the, this prison cell is too risky. He's <laughs> <laughs> too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, the Iron Shore, which I think should have been the curse of the Metacore or whatever it's it's called. I think that that was by far the best story. I actually, part of me thought that Mm. that story was written by Simon Guerrier because it did what Simon Guerrier does. And Simon Guerrier basically is talking about, well, take a story and he'll be, the, the main character will be relaying it to somebody else and where you because out of all the stories like this is the first time we really kind of had narration in a full cast audio and we'd go to you know katie manning giving us the play-by-play narration of like the setup or whatever and i want to play this for you because i feel as though um i feel as though there was a mistake that occurred in this story and I feel as though it was the direction that was given to Lizzie Hopley was incorrect, and that direction was given by Nick Briggs. And I want to see if you can pick this up. Yeah, we just wanted the notion that Joe was travelling and going to other planets. And uh, I think ending up in Liverpool or wherever it was, you know, I don't think was, you know, the exciting canvas we were looking for. No offence to Liverpool. Obviously, it's a wonderful, vibrant and exciting place but it's not another planet. We picked this. And then when the storyline, the adjusted storyline came in and there's this whole business about the doctor risking his life, I suddenly hit upon the idea. I said, why don't we begin at the point where he's apparently died and then make this very Joe-centric in that we hear Joe Jones narrating and it feels like she's telling us the story of how the doctor died. Now, of course, we all know that the doctor didn't die in his third incarnation but joe doesn't know that and it just adds attention to the story and you you want to find out how he apparently didn't die when he apparently did so yeah and i think that was the thing that final twist was something that really okay so yeah what what was i've spotted the mistake what was that the mistake is where briggs goes oh yeah joe didn't know that the doctor didn't die in his third incarnation Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Because it was even brought up in the first story. Yeah. Yeah, it was. She She's met the the, the uh. 11th one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, it, it was a good, like, I didn't mind, like, you know, the, again, the narration was fine. No problem with that. But I was just like, and, and he, again, 
here's where Chibnall has kind of really painted everything in the corner with like the whole timeless child. There's no fear that the doctor is ever going to die. He'll just, it'll just regenerate forever and ever ongoing unless something tends to happen. I was not concerned that the doctor was going to die because of the third thing uh, that, you know, obviously it's the third doctor. Joe should be very aware because she, again, at the very beginning of the whole thing, she even made mention of it. And he also made mention of like when it not invaded it. his mind yeah. the first time that it knows all of his, all of him, whatever he's going to be in the future, whatever he has been in the past, that, uh, you know, whatever it's called, like Solomon, that thing knows everything about him. Mm. And so it's just like, well, why are we afraid that he's dead? Why? Like, it, it just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Unless it's the whole, the only thing I can think of it and it works is, oh, well, he's, he's meant, you know, he's not meant to die, but he could still die. You know what I mean? Type of a thing. Like, um, yeah. you know, she's seen his 11th incarnation, but this thing goes back and basically is able to cut him off from that future by killing him in his third incarnation type type of thing. That's yeah. the only thing mm. I can think of that she might have some level of, oh, perhaps perhaps it has killed him properly. Yeah, possibly. Even though she's seen that. So, I mean, I, I I do like that it kind of teased that there's a possibility that this Solomon creature is, is not the last that we've seen from him. I, I would hope that he, here's the struggle that I see Big Finish having to, to tackle is they can they will introduce a villain and it will eventually be de uh, defeated in either two parts or four parts, sometimes six parts. And then every so often, that villain will do have a reoccurring appearance from time to time. But then what they do is they make a villain so strong and deadly to the Doctor, such as this Solomon, such as also the Word Lord, that it's almost like there's it takes Nothing another like character to kill them, to kill them. Because there's nothing else, yeah, like you said, there's nothing else they can do. And so I, I think what they need to tackle with is I, I, I would like them to also kind of like very comic booky, kind of allow the, this thing to like lick its wounds, L allow like a master character to be defeated and be taken away in defeat, but uh, reappear. Like, w why does every creature have to be like oh it's i'm defeated and i'm dead Ugh. or oh i'm defeated i've changed my ways i i i've i will do, do right by now from now on like wh why does that have to be a thing why can't it mm. just be like uh you know it gets like arrested by the inter you know intergalactic space police or whatever and in mid transit you know escapes and oh the doctor's just like oh no it's loose just having something to defeat again, like that—that's my only thing that I wish that they that Big Finish would do a little bit more of. And also, the the new series of Doctor Who is stop making these monsters that are near undefeatable. Also, kind of like the bedazzled and bedazzled at type of a thing that are so powerful, it basically takes another entity to wipe them from existence. To can I just say one thing? <laughs> yeah. The well, but it, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing about about that. They they do have the eleven, but your complaint is that they overused it too much. I know, I know, I know. I was just trying to like put David into the idea about you know the whole you know oh he's been he's he's been he's been captured. Ah, he's escaped again. <laughs> yeah, like, you know. But I mean, think but, about that. Yeah, you, out of all of them. You only have basically one reference. You can even say the reference that they kind of tease at the end of Supernature that you three liked and I don't really care about. And I, besides that, there's like really to me nothing else that they, where they've kind of done anything mm. with that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's another character that they've brought back or whatever, but. No, no. No, you're right. 
That, that's not even a sentence. No, you are right. I mean, I like the fact that we are getting older Joe. I'd love to see Third Doctor meets older Liz as well, you know, after his time with her in unit. Yeah, but then then we'd accuse it, and fans would accuse it, of rehashing the Joe Jones idea. Yeah, I guess. I guess. You know, true. how much of one thing is too true. much of a good thing? Yeah, it would just be nice to know what she's up to, that's all. I mean, we we can't even say this no. is a good thing oh. yet. <laughs> what they could do is they could take... <laughs> okay, this is just completely tongue-in-cheek, okay? Uh, they could take all of their ideas for Jago and Lightfoot that they weren't able to do, and they could have Sarah Jane and Harry, the retirement years, and both of those two could... <laughs> <laughs> Could team up and fight, you know, alien incursions or whatever. Uh, yeah. All right. So with, with that <laughs> yawn, let's give our rev- review or rating for the return of Joe Jones, and then I guess we will conclude this podcast. So, what did you think of the Third Doctor Adventures: The Return of Joe Jones? I would give it uh, probably a seven point five. I'll give it a six. Yeah. I think I'll give it a seven. Six point five. I really didn't, didn't mm. enjoy the second oh. story. Wow. I just I don't. Wow. I think it worked better if it was four parters. Yeah. Yeah. Specifically. Yes. Yeah. Specifically the third story, but also the first story as four parters. Yep. Totally mm-hmm. agree. Yeah. Well, that will conclude episode number two seventy six of the Doctor Lumber podcast. Thanks again for downloading and listening. We do appreciate it. Thanks again for all of you that have emailed or DM the show during our lighter month of releases, that being April of 2023. Yeah, we have not really been there. Uh, Episodes have been recorded, but uh, schedules and stuff like that have conflicted with certain things. We do have two future podcasts already recorded in the can and one scheduled for about a week into the month of May. So that being said, the month of May should probably be filled with joy and happiness from the Doctor Who Will Amber podcast. But yeah, thanks for those of you that reached out wondering where we are. Are we okay? Are we still doing this? So thanks again for those. We do appreciate them. Please listen back to few further or previous podcasts. And we would love to hear your feedback, your thoughts, questions, concerns. Like, why the heck did you have this stance? I, I enjoy personally... Uh, being questioned about my thoughts and opinions and I'm perfectly fine with it because they are my thoughts and opinions. They are not meant to, you know, hurt feelings or whatever. It is just merely my thoughts. So again, we'd love to hear your thoughts, feedbacks, comments, concerns. And yeah, that being said, thanks again for, again, downloading and listening. Uh, We'd love, you know, feedback, but you know what? Subscribing to wherever you listen to podcasts, to me that is the most important thing because that just shows that, you know, besides the four of us, other people also find us interesting too. So with that being said, thanks again. And until next time, we will just see you in time. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet us at alhambrapodcast. That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A podcast. Thank you.